What's up guys, we're back with another Thundercats Wave 2 review, taking a look, finally, at my favorite Thundercat, favorite actual core Thundercat member. We are taking a look today at the one and only Tiger. So of course, you know, he comes here in the standard, standard size and standard style box, so he's not a huge box like Mumra, of course. He's just like the majority of the other figures in the line. So you've got him here with the, the actual Thundercats logo this time around, emblazoned there with that nice foil stamp. And then you've got the classic Thundercats logo on the back. Of course, it is a slip cover though, so pop that guy off. And then you've got the figure there in that big old window, so you can see him there with all of his accessories, uh, logo and name down on the bottom. And then the back of the box features the same artwork uh, that we've seen on his reaction figure, as well as a little bit of a bio. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our Ultimates Tigra. Again, my favorite Thundercat, the one I've been, I've been looking forward to well, the most, really, when it comes to actual Thundercats. And, and there's a lot to talk about with this guy. He, unfortunately, does have some issues, which we're going to have to discuss. There's a lot here to like still, don't get me wrong, but there are definitely things uh, that need to be need to be analyzed and need to be looked at, because there are some things here that definitely just did not happen the way that we expected them to, from missing parts to colors in general. Things of that nature. So let's get started, see what he can do, see how he moves around. He, he's still an Ultimates figure, so, you know, if you got Lion-O, you pretty much know what's going on with Tigra. So the head is is pretty locked down, as you might expect. Uh, his entire noggin basically encompasses the neck, so there's really nowhere for it to go. He can't really go back and forth except doing, like, one of these little bobble numbers, and you've got full rotation. That's pretty much it. Arms go out at the shoulder. The... Um, his right arm goes out further than his left because he's got the thing, shoulder sleeve thing over here. So you've got that. Uh, arms will, of course, rotate. The This arm does not go as far as this arm because of said thing. You've got your bicep swivel. We've got our single jointed elbow. It's 90-ish degrees. And it has a little shimmy, but it's not full rotation. Uh, you've got rotation and hinge at the wrist. Abs, he goes backwards really far. Forward crunch is pretty crazy on this guy, though. Uh, he goes really, really far over forward. You do have your waist twist. Legs go out, I mean, pretty much full splits. They kick forward about all the way. Backwards slightly, you've got your thigh cut up there. You've got your single jointed uh, rotating knee, you know, rotating once it's bent. And then you've also got a boot cut shin swivel down there. And then you've got rocker, and you've got hinges uh, down at those ankles. So normal ultimates, really nothing, nothing too surprising here. Exactly, and I'm, we're getting basically what I expect for a standard Thundercat kind of figure. He's not, he's not the same as Lionel. He's not the same as Panthero, but he is still built on that same framework and moves pretty well as a result. Now, when it comes to the aesthetics, this is where, this is where this figure I think is going to be. I think divisive is probably going to be the word that best describe it, at least at least now. You know, not a lot of these figures are out there, so there's only so many examples to, to, really, to really get people going. And there are a handful of things about this guy that, that are problematic. There's one definite QC issue. I've got one QC issue specific to my figure. And then we've got to talk about his color palette. So let's start with, let's start with the thing that's already wrong with him. Uh, so unfortunately, he does not have his band on his forearm. So it should be right up here at the top of the, of, of the arm, and there should be an elbow pad back here. Uh, he doesn't have it. I wish he had it. It's not there. I can't do anything about it. It's too late. You know, it's it's a it's a problem with the figure. It's not ruining Tiger for me by any stretch of the imagination. I know it's missing, but I'm also not going to lose any sleep over it. I wish it was there. Uh, unfortunately, it is not. So that's a miss for sure. It's definitely worth calling out. Uh, the other aspects of this figure that I know are going to be something that are at odds with people are the colors in particular. And I'm talking every single color on this figure. So from seeing protos to seeing the hand-painted... Uh, you know, shots in the promotional video from Super 7, you know, what, two years ago at this point, to seeing the one in the case at PowerCon last year. This guy has gone through some considerable revisions in many ways. So, you know, you could go on to Big Bad Toy Store right now and look at those original prototypes, and it's, it's honestly not too different from this. The oranges and the... Uh, what is this supposed to be? What is, what is that? I mean, it's, it's like a 
flesh tone almost, but it's more yellowy here. They're all toned down because they're painted. So there's a, there's a lot of uh, molded plastic here, like the hands, the forearms are molded plastic. It's all very saturated. I don't mind it but it is definitely a little bit different and jarring compared to some of those prototype images. I think the orange and the black honestly works really well. They're super, super deep, and they just contrast really nicely. I was really concerned he'd be so um, dim in many ways that he would blend into my background, because orange is my nemesis when it comes to figures. But this guy just pops, so I'm really happy with the way he looks, not just because of that, but I think it looks good. So I'm okay with that on a personal level. It is, of course, a little bit of a difference. The big thing, is his outfit, his overall color scheme. Because in the original prototype images, again, you know, Big Bad Toy Store listing or wherever you wanna go and check, it looks very similar to this. Again, it's painted, you know, it's, it's all painted. So there is a, a decent amount of paint on this guy, but that thing was entirely painted. And as a result, some of the colors were a little bit softer and they were more subdued. The animation cells for the show, I mean, you could readily go onto Google and find examples of this, look very similar to this. The LJ and Toy looks very similar to this. It's not a toy line, though. This is supposed to be a cartoon line. So it does look very close to some of that cell artwork. But if you actually go look at the cartoon, a lot of times he looks blue. Um, you know, you could just go on YouTube, find any clip you want, and there's a good chance he's going to look really, really, really blue. I don't know if there, what the reasoning behind that is, why it differs between the broadcast version versus the cell, but he looks really blue. There's a video from Super 7 where uh, they're showing off some of the hand-painted prototypes. Tiger looks really blue. The PowerCon figure looked really blue. Um, you know, I saw that one in person, so I knew that there was definitely a change there, and obviously at one point or another, this was switched back. So this is kind of the, the original interpretation, I'm assuming based off of a lot of the actual cell artwork, not necessarily what it looked like all the time on screen. Am I okay with this? I'm relatively okay with this. I don't really mind this. I mean, I have so many vintage figures of Tiger that look just like this, it's, it's very much normal for him to look this way to me. It's still really weird that we saw such a huge color palette change and then it got changed back. So I was expecting him to be more blue. He turned out to be this. I'm pretty much okay with it though because it does have a basis in reality. That said, you know, you might expect to have been gotten getting one thing and are getting another or, you know, whatever. I'm not really sure what a lot of people were expecting to get because again, there's multiple instances of, instances of this guy looking different out there. So your mileage may vary on what you were expecting to get versus what we got. Uh, I originally thought he was going to look very green, and then I thought he was going to look blue, and he came out looking, you know, the sort of teal color that is represented in many instances. So I'm not too upset about it. It it kind of is what it is. So you have to you'll have to infer from that what you will. I do think that the figure in general is pretty well done. Colors do pop. I mean, there's no doubt about it. This guy is going to stand out on the shelf because of his very saturated color palette. The teals are really deep. The light blues contrast to that really well. The oranges and blacks pop. The sculpt on him is fantastic. I mean, there is a lot of new stuff here when it comes to making him uniquely Tigra compared to Panthro, compared to lion -O. Uh, Like I said, I do have one unique QC issue. Of all the places to get a nick on the figure, it has to be on the Thundercats emblem right dead center in the figure. So I'm going to have to see if I can figure out a way to, to touch that up somehow. And then also worth mentioning is the fact that possibly to tie in the gold on this sleeve pauldron thing over here, he has a gold spray on his stomach to like bring out the musculature. I do not really care for this. I wish it was like a blue or a green color or even just a subtle black because it looks like he's dirty. But in some instances, it looks fine. It's, it very much brings out that sculpt, but it's also kind of a kind of a weird color. And then, of course, we've got our head sculpt, which is still very on point for what we were expecting to get. It is different colors, though, because, of course, there's a lot of molded plastic for the orange in the head. And then they've kind of got a deeper, a deeper creamy yellow color for the non-orange stuff. I, you know, the other color that's on his face. The, he's got a slight smile, and then of course you've got uh, pretty decently painted eyes. The white on the hair is incredibly saturated and like super, super bright. I do like that though. It definitely stands out uh, from the rest of the figure. And then, you know, ultimately this is, this is a very tiger looking figure. Like it's instantly recognizable. 
I'm pretty happy with him overall. Uh, there is definitely room for improvement on this guy, though, uh, for sure. Like, honestly, I would love to see him done in blue. I wouldn't mind having this version and a blue version, because I think of him in many respects in both ways. What I really want is to have this fix, though. Uh, I don't know if it's possible to have that done via any kind of booster pack like we had for Wave 1. I'm not so sure it's that level of a problem, really, but it is a miss. It's unfortunate that that isn't there, but I do think there is still a lot of good with this figure. But at the same time, there are some problems that just have to be mentioned. And then as far as size comparisons, we've got Panthro, we've got Lino, and of course Tigra in the middle. To give you an idea of what he looks like alongside the other two Thundercats that, you know, would go with him more commonly. So he is supposed to be very in line with Lino, and then of course they're both slightly taller than Panthro. You know, he's the, he's the small bruiser on the team. Uh, so I do think they look pretty good together. Tigra does seem to be a little bit beefier, especially compared to Lino, but I'm, I'm chalking that up to the fact that this is entirely new sculpt and not just reusing old Matty stuff. I mean, I think he looks great, especially in comparison to these two. He definitely looks and feels like one of those progression kind of figures where they have used some new some new techniques to make him into just a more just a more enjoyable figure to pose but then again you know he still stacks up very nicely alongside of them of course he is pinless uh you know in comparison to these two where they still are rocking the old massive matty pins now uh let's do someone else Let, let's pull the big guy in so here he is with uh with mumra from well, the same wave, and you can see he's so big he is out of frame. And then let's do another Ultimates, but from a different line. So let's do a Turtle. Donnie's uh, available, so we'll use Donnie. So you can see, of course, they are about a, about a head taller than the Turtles in general when it comes to Thundercats. And then we'll do, we'll do something else, something smaller. Different style, different kind of figure. So here... Here he is with a figure art. So here he is with the most recent uh, Boba Fett. And of course you can see that there is a big difference there. That doesn't scale at all. And then we'll do a Marvel Legend just for a more normal uh, 112 kind of figure. So there he is with the AOA Cyclops, which is essentially just a Bucky Cap kind of figure. So he is pretty well sized for the Ultimates line. I do think he is a little bit more robust in some ways than some of the other Thundercats, but that's a benefit of him getting all this new torso sculpting to make him look so muscly and svelte. Now, as far as comparing Tigra to other Tigras, here we are with our two uh, LJN counterparts, so our young on the left and our old on the right, because Tigra had a running change to give him uh, what ended up being two separate, unique figures in the vintage line. And you can see there is a lot to compare to here. Uh, the orange, very saturated, and then of course the colors are very identical in many ways. Like, they're very, very, very close. Again, I'm not sure that's the intent, I have no way of knowing that, but it's also what the animation cell artwork looks like in many instances, too. So that blue color scheme that we see and have seen comes in sort of in a different arena. So I still don't know what the difference is between what we've seen and what we got, but there is a, a, a clear similarity between Vintage and Super 7. And honestly, I think they look pretty good together. Like that's a that's a happy little Tiger family. So uh, let's move these aside real quick. And then we've got another classic Tiger to look at. And that of course would be the Bandai uh, 8 inch and yeah, he's a he's a big fella. Um, so this, of course, let's move this up a little bit. This, of course, is the Tigra that came out in the Thundercats Classics line by Bandai. It's an eight-inch figure to sort of mimic the Vintage line, although Tigra's figure was not eight-inch in the in the Vintage line. And then, of course, he has that very distinct blue color palette. I have a fondness for this figure. It's it's not the greatest figure in the world by uh, modern standards, but for the longest time, it was the best Tiger that we had. This one blows him out of the water for me. I mean, there's really no comparison. He does, of course, have the, the elbow pad, so, you know, it's there. And then we've got a different color palette. But I, I do prefer the Super 7. It's, it's aesthetically more pleasing. It looks much more like a collector toy. And this, this looks like an older collector toy. So you've got, you know, kind of your, your cross-section of Tigras when it comes to these versions of the character. So you've got two old figures. You've got the Bandai from, what, a decade ago, roughly? And then we've got our Super 7. Now, as far as accessories goes, Tigra is interesting. 
There's everything about this guy is interesting. He is not the same as any of the other Thundercats. So all the other ones come with stuff that is specific to them or stuff that they use or come across, but a lot of it is also deep cut, non-essential, weird accessories. Tigra has none of that. He does not get, uh, you know, a samoflange. He doesn't get a braille board. He doesn't get a treasure of Thundera. All he gets are stuff that is uniquely his own. Not that that's a bad thing. Like, a lot of that stuff I don't really know what to do with most of the time, but it's a difference, so it's kind of worth calling out. So, to start with, we do get his extra head sculpt. It's kind of like a wincing angry-ish kind of expression. It's okay. Uh, I prefer the regular head sculpt, which is weird for me, because usually I love the alt heads better, just because they're more expressive, but I really like this head. Like, this is really doing it for me, so I'm going to stick stick with this guy. Uh, we do have some extra hands. So he's got these uh, lateral, you know, horizontal gripping hands on him in the box. You get a set of vertically hinged hands for gripping, and then you get a set of style pose, clawed finger kind of hands. These are pretty normal for the cats, pretty standard across the board. What he doesn't come with are fists, though. So this is another instance in the line where a Thundercat is not getting any fists. Uh, we do get his closed bola whip. You know, so his bola is his main weapon. It's the vessel by which he, he you know, turns invisible. Makes me wonder if we're ever going to get a clear Tigra variant down the road. I would absolutely be on board for that, but that's a discussion for another day. So you've got just the gold handle with the red balls up top. We get this big monster right here. So this, let's pull back a bit. This is his bola extended in a very rigid but semi-flexible fashion. So it's not going to change shape or anything, but it does move and, you know, contort a bit. So this is like a pre-posed bola whip in plastic. Kind of rubbery, kind of rigid at the same time, which doesn't sound like it makes sense, but you'll understand when you get it in your hands. Gold, blue, red balls. And then we get this guy here as the final accessory. So it's not a bendy wire, it's a fabric cord. And it actually feels pretty nice. Like, I'm okay with this. I do kind of wish we had a bendy wire one, though, just because I feel like it would work a lot better. But it does work really nicely if you want to actually have him, like, hold this or wrap it around his forearm like he does. Uh, so it works really nicely, and you're not going to have to worry about it. I suppose you don't have to worry about it stressing too much. So maybe this is a, a happy medium in some ways. Uh, paid no attention to this knot. I, un I unknotted it by playing around with it too much, so uh, I had to knot it quickly and poorly, so it'll look better in the box. And then you've got the same kind of end for this. It's basically the same thing, just smaller. So you've got that. So you've got three different options as far as his bowl whip, and I'm assuming that's why he doesn't get anything else, because you've got this stuff. I Honestly, I think my preference is probably going to be this one, because I just really like this from a displayability standpoint, especially if you don't have space for the other stuff, or if you don't really know what to do with this as far as your display. Uh, this is a handy option to have, just because it fully represents the weapon and takes up, like, no space. So overall, there are a few problems with this figure. There are no no ways around that. There are a few problems with Tigra. I still am getting quite a bit of enjoyment out of this guy. He's my favorite Thundercat, so I've really been looking forward to this one. But the problems can't not be said. He's missing that elbow pad. There's no doubt about that. It should have been there. And then, of course, there's the color scheme problem. Was he originally intended to be this color? The prototype sort of looked this way, but he was changed to blue at some point. And then I saw him in person at PowerCon as a blue uh, suited figure. But now he's back to this. So I'm not really sure what is or isn't correct anymore, but I do know that this is based in reality. It does have plenty of reference material to support this color scheme. Uh, so I'm not too beat up about that. It's just more of a, a curiosity at this point. There are a few things I would have changed about accessories, but for the most part, I am still pretty happy with the package that we got here. Paintwork, for the most part, is pretty pretty decent, and the sculpt on him is, is really nicely done. I don't really have anything to complain about when it comes to the sculpt. I think the head looks good, body is sized really well, he's got some nice details when it comes to that musculature, and of course, you know, if he had the elbow pad, he'd be pretty much perfect in that department. So that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 Ultimates Thundercats Wave 2 Tigra. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.